Hey guys, welcome to the Dynamic Duo. I'm Franz. I'm Kevin. Welcome back, finally, to the new Batcave and the new home of the Avengers. It is so nice to see you all and have you see us once again. Kevin, this is a special day for me because as you've just mentioned, we've been on hiatus for quite some time. And the reason we've been on hiatus is because you had some issues that came up. Um, it's, to me, as I've told you personally, but I want to say publicly, how inspirational you are to me and how courageous I find you and how much of a warrior. I, I call you my superhero and it's for good reasons. Would you like to tell the audience perhaps a little bit, perhaps about what happened and, and your recovery process? Ladies and gentlemen, what you're hearing from me um, is a little different from what you had gotten used to in the past. I want to let you know, no, I have not been hitting the cognac or been drinking. Unfortunately, in June, I suffered a stroke. I spent two and a half months in the hospital and have been home for about two weeks now, a little bit more than two weeks. And I want you all to know that I am internally and forever grateful to all of you, friends and family alike that supported me through this. Uh, the weird thing is I ended up at the same hospital that put me in the wheelchair to begin with. But I honestly want to thank the doctors, the nurses, the staff, and especially the therapy department of Kernan's Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, I am on a line of recovery, the back and the Jedi, as they say, will and is returning. And I thank you all. And in spite of the stroke, I want you all to know that this is a new beginning for the dynamic duo. And I want to openly once more thank my partner, Franz Canal, Captain America. You are a hero to me. Well, I, I don't know if that that's deserved, but that means a lot to me. Uh, it means a lot to me because you mean so much to me. And, and you know, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we go through our lives and, and we face difficulties and, and, and um, sometimes we feel like those difficulties are overwhelming. Like we can't, we, we can't survive um, the things that are happening to us. But in those moments, and if you look at a guy like Kevin and what he has accomplished and what he's achieved and the courage that he took for not giving up and fighting back, uh, let me explain. This is when he said that this is a hospital that put him in a wheelchair in the first place. How many years ago, Kevin? Like 40, 30 years? How many years ago? Thereabouts. It was in 1977. That's a dramatic story in and of itself that I've been telling him that he's actually working on a book because it's that dramatic of a story of the things that happened to him as a child. And for, for Kevin to have suffered a stroke now and be re-put back in the hospital and we have to go through physical therapy and face the difficulty of, of having a slurred speech and having weakness on the left side and, and having to start almost from scratch and never losing faith. Kevin said to me, Franz, I will not let this destroy me. I will not let this change who I am. I'm still Kevin, and I'm going to be Kevin, and I'm going to be back. And in a very short amount of time, he worked hard, ladies and gentlemen, to regain that strength. And he continues to work to regain his speech and his strength and his spirit. The most important thing is his spirit. Like, Sometimes people get depressed over things and it's not, you can't blame someone for, for having difficulty dealing with issues. But 
when you see someone dealing with real issues and overcoming those issues through his will, that's inspiring to me. And it can constantly reminds me never to take a moment for granted. Um, and so I mean it when I say, Kevin, you're my hero. I mean it. I really do. And um, we're going to do this show. We're back in business. And guys, you know, one thing I, I'm going to add, uh, you mentioned, you thank the hospital. You mentioned your friends. You know, it's a reflection on you, the f quality of friends that you have the things they did for you. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, there's so many, and I don't even know all of them because I wasn't there, but I went to visit Kevin and get, groups of guys got together, went to a convention, found uh, Billy D. Williams, got him to sign a personalized uh, picture just to send to, to Jedi with a beautiful, beautiful uh, letter from the Federation. I mean, it's a reflection on who you are, my friend, as to who your friends are. And I applaud both you and your friends um, for, for who they are. Anyway, um, listen, guys, welcome back. We have lots to talk about. We have been on hiatus and we've missed a lot of news. And so what we're going to do is we're going to break up the show into many different pieces. We're going to hit as many subjects as we can possibly hit. We have requests for subjects. We have all kinds of things. So, Kevin... Actually, I was watching it last night, and you came to mind. I want to get your quick impression of Ahsoka. Um, as a mo as you're the Star Wars guy, what's your impression of Ahsoka? I actually love the show. I really do. There has been a lot of back and forth and some controversy and debating about the acting for the show, but I think it's dead on. The characters and the actors that they have chosen are nailing the story and they're nailing the parts. I am really hoping that Disney, in spite of the strike and all that's going on, in Tinsel Town will allow them to do a second show. As of right now, um, I believe four of the shows have aired, and there are eight in total. So they're more than half. Actually, I think five. Have a, but I am loving the show. I love that they have incorporated characters from Star Wars Rebels. And I am really looking forward to the rest of this. Did you watch Star Wars Rebels? I mean, I'm oh, silly, yeah. A silly question. But oh, the audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, the, the characters of Hera, Sabine, Chopper, all concerned. It's a fantastic animated series. Yeah. I'm hoping that before this is over, that we get a real-life physical representation of Ezra, the one character that I would love to see, but I don't think we will, <laughs> is Kanan, Ezra's master. Oh, um, but Ezra's obviously coming. I mean, they're building up. I'm really hoping they bring him in. So I'm coming at this from, from a non-fan perspective, meaning non-Star non Wars fanatics perspective. Uh, I didn't watch Star Wars Rebel. Shame <clears throat> on you. <laughs> but I want to, though. I want to. I've checked out a couple of episodes from watching Ahsoka. And and it look, you're right. It looks really good and very interesting. And so I don't know to what extent the show is faithful or not faithful. What I do know is that I find it really well done. I really, I do find it faithful. From a point of view of visually speaking, 
uh, the way Ahsoka looked, the way the other characters look. I love the fact, Kevin, that they, they don't run away from the look. They don't run away from the material. I wish Marvel would, would be a little bit more faithful with respect to that. Um, one of the things, I don't know about the controversy that you talked about, but the initial first episodes, I did notice a certain slight weakness in, in the performances of the two characters in particular. I, I noticed there was a slight, their performances weren't quite as matching as some of the other actors. Agreed. Um, particularly particularly uh, Rosario Del Dawson. Yeah, yeah, especially compared to Rosario Dawson, who in my opinion is bringing it really, really, really hard. Having said that, in no way, shape or form did I think that those performances ruined the show. Um, the show is very strong, very entertaining. It, to me, is equivalent to The Mandalorian. Whereas Boba Fett went down a little bit in quality, some episodes were really good, the, the episodes with Mandalorian in it, and some episodes were really poor. And overall, I didn't, I wasn't crazy about it. I find that Ahsoka is right on par with, with Mandalorian. And if you create that universe on that level of quality, to me, it's a win-win. And the last thing that I'm going to say is that I noticed in episodes five and six that the actors or the directors kind of upped that those performances and they weren't as as weak as as in the in the initial issues. So two thumbs up, way up. I'm enjoying the show very, very thoroughly, enough so that I want to watch the the animated series. I have done it at last. I have made <laughs> you a Star Wars fan. Now Yay, let's, let's not go crazy now. I, I have to earn my stripes before I can call myself <laughs> a Star Wars fan. Like, you know, but, you, know it's, it, you bring up a good, an interesting subject is because a lot of people claim, and we've said this before, a lot of people claim fandom and don't deserve. They don't earn it. When I say I'm not a Star Wars fan, I don't mean that I don't know Star Wars. I don't mean that I don't like Star Wars. I don't mean that I'm not into Star Wars. What I mean is that I am not an aficionado. I don't know Star Wars intimately, as intimately as you do, Kevin. And so that's what I mean. And so uh, and so before I get that title, I need to earn it before I'm able to opine on Star Wars and tell you what I think from a Star Wars perspective. I can tell you from an outsider's perspective, but not from a Star Wars perspective. All I can say at this point is may the Force be with you <laughs> and the show and any future endeavors they may have.